good afternoon. My name is Yaniv Koppelman. I'm from Marvel Semiconductor, and I'll present to you today how we extend the life cycle of a 3.2 switch. So there are many challenges in today's and in future data center networks. I'll highlight some of them, and as the presentation goes on, I'll show you how we actually solve them. So the first one is that the silicon becomes bigger and the IO throughput becomes higher. That, that poses a problem for people that want to use 10 gig interfaces where the, where the silicon only have 25 and then next generation will have 50 gig IOs. So how do I connect to my 10 gig NICs? That's a problem. The other problem is that as we go forward, the silicon consumes more power and in a more dense area. So there is a cooling problem of the boxes. That's the second problem. The third problem is that as the network, as the data center supports more and more servers, the number of hierarchies in the data centers become larger and larger, and the latency for north-south and east-west traffic becomes higher. And the fourth problem is that the price of silicon per gate does not go down. In the past, we used to start from 90 nanometer, where we wanted to cost reduce, we went to 65 nanometer, and then 40 nanometer, 28 nanometer. Right now, where the industry is moving 28 nanometer to 60 nanometer, the prices start going up. Next generation, we want to reduce, we go to seven nanometer, but the price goes up again. So there is no way to reduce the silicon cost by going down in the process node. So we'll show you how we can still reduce the total cost of ownership by enabling a more innovative solution. So our solution to the problem is to introduce modularity in the network. That's where, that's where we're going to innovate and we're going to disaggregate the network from a hardware perspective. Up until now, everybody was doing disaggregation of software and hardware. That was, what, that was what happened before. Now we are disaggregating the hardware itself. So how do we do it? Let's look at the, at the typical data center network. What you see here is a three-tier network. We have the core switches connecting to the outside world. The spine switches is the middle layer, and the top of the rack switches are uh, on each one of the racks. Focusing on the access layer, the spine and the top of the rack switches. Today, you, you connect each, uh, each, spine, each top of the rack switch to a spine switch. And you have a full switch in the top of the rack and a full switch in the, in the spine switch. What we are going to do, we're going to remove the top of the rack layer and replace that with an I.O. device. So virtually, we take the I.O. of the spine switch and move it to the top of the rack switch. And we call that device a passive top of the rack. So we take each one of the I.O.s from the spine and we put it on each one of the top of the rack switches. Now you get a layer that is unmanaged, that is passive, and just processes the packets toward the spine switch. And the spine switch is now acts as a controlling bridge. So the spine switch actually is managing that layer that was managed before in the top of the rack switch. That's how we disaggregate the IOs from the processing engine by modularity. This is the idea. Now, Today, we are introducing a new family of devices. We call it the PX family. The first device in the PX family is the pipe, which is a passive intelligent port extender. The pipe is the first merchant silicon that actually does this function of a port extender. It is not a switch. It is not a top of the rack. It's a port extender. It doesn't have a routing table. It doesn't have an FDB table. But it does very uh, intelligent muxing of packets toward the, uh, the uplink. Why, is that, why am I calling that intelligence? 
because some information needs to pass to a controlling bridge in order for him to analyze the packet. So we do it by actually having a, a, con a programmable engine inside our MUX that can alter the packet and, and provide each of the tags to the controlling bridge in a programmable way. So some of the examples are 802.1br. That's a standard that actually was developed in 2012 and is now fully deployed in each of the controlling bridge and the port extender. Each one of the major OEMs today supports a controlling bridge with 802.1br, and we will connect to that controlling bridge as well. However, some implementations are proprietary, so we can also adjust our tagging information to that proprietary uh, solutions. We're also providing a turnkey software solution so with our software, you will be able to connect to any of the leading OEM controlling bridge. The device itself supports a very low power, and I'll show you how we can, with, uh, with these devices, implement a fanless top-of-the-rack switch. It also integrates an ARM controller, so all the management, the, the, the protocol running between the port extender and the controlling bridge can run in-band using the, the on-chip CPU, so you don't actually need a CPU on the board, no management. And there are also advanced analytics there that can, uh, that can uh, enable the controlling bridge to understand what's happening in that layer. So if there's any packet drops, if there is any congestion in that layer, it is uh, sent to the controlling bridge. And quality of service is maintained across the, the, all the layers, so we have a full buffer with eight priority queues that can uh, uh, differentiate between high priority and low priority packets. Along with the, the pipe family, we're also delivering a controlling bridge hardware that can emulate, that can look at the ports of the port extender and actually manage them. For that, we are, we are uh, introducing uh, remote ports in the controlling bridge that actually each one of the remote ports is talking to a top of the rack, a passive top of the rack port. And we manage them from the controlling bridge. We have a virtual output queues, so each one of the top of the rack switch, top of the rack ports also has a eight queues in the controlling bridge. And there is a flow control mechanism that can go between the top of the rack to the controlling bridge and indicate congestion per downstream port in the top of the rack switch. And as well as in our pipe project product, we also have the programmable engine that can support any kind of tag in our controlling bridge. So that two devices together, our pipe and our controlling bridge together, can provide a perfect solution. However, we're not limited to working only with the Marvel controlling bridge. We're open to all the other vendors, all the OEM, to connect to our controlling bridge. Now let's go back and see how we solve all the problems that I showed you in the first slide. First of all, high silicon, big IOs. You get these big, big silicons, the 6.4, 12.8 silicon, the, today the 3.2 silicon that has 25, 50 gig IOs. And by connecting pipe to these, you all of a sudden can fan out all these high throughput IOs to a lower throughput IOs. The power, how do we solve the power? So today, each top of the rack switch consumes around between 300 and 400 watts. Our solution actually reduces the power in the top of the rack by, by almost 40%, 40% of power reduction in all the top of the rack switches. This is huge for a data center. The latency, we are enabling a high radix controlling bridge. So by adding more ports in the controlling bridge, you actually can reduce one level, one tier of the network. You're removing in one tier, you're saving in latency. East-West and North-South traffic, latency is reduced. And regarding the process, by enabling the disaggregation of the IOs from the processing engine, we are reducing the area of the, of the DISAs and we are able to perform the same function with a higher node. So 
all of a sudden we can use a 28 nanometer process and reduce the total cost of the system. And lastly, but not least, we're also simplifying the management of the data center by reducing the level of the top of the, the rack. This level is not, today it's managed by a centralized switch, but by reducing that layer, we're actually enabling management only in the spine level, which reduces the number of devices you need to manage by a factor of almost uh, uh, 2x. So that's huge saving for the whole data center. Now I want to show you a few use cases. I talked about the first use cases, which is a passive top of the rack. The passive top of the rack is built from four pipe devices that are connected uh, to the network port with 10 gig ports and to the uplink port with a four by 100 gig port. So you get, you virtually get a four by 100 plus 48 by 10 passive top of the rack device with eight PCB layers. Today, the most, uh, the most common uh, top of the rack support between 14 to 20 PCB layer, which is all about the cost. We're using an interface which has a short link for 25 gig. That reduces your uh, requirements for expensive retimers in the board. And the low power will enable a fanless design. Just to illustrate, here you see a traditional top of the rack with 48 times 10 and 6 by 400. On the left side, you see the pipe 48 plus 4 by 400. You see that the PCB is almost half, enabling us to reduce the, and the number of layers also is almost half. That will enable us to reduce the capex. In addition, Supporting for 802.1 be our standard interface and reducing the number of management layer in the network reduces your OPEX. So in total, we bring a CAPEX and OPEX uh, power re pa cost reduction. The next use case I want to speak about is the gearbox. Today, most gearboxes use a proprietary interface like MLG to move from one speed to the other. We're here introducing a device that can actually connect to any device in the network, any legacy device, any 10 gig legacy device, and convert that to 25 gig, 50 gig, and 100 gig. Here are some examples of the gearbox capabilities. For example, if you have a 40 gig device today, and you want to move it to 50 gig or 100 gig, you just plug in the pipe, and all of a sudden, your uplink interface is either increased or reduced based on the needs of the system. The third use case is to implement a high density, either top of the rack or a Ethernet switch. By plugging the pipe device to a very high performance switch, which now all the switches that are coming out are high performance, you can all of a sudden implement a device that has multi hundreds of ports with a very high radix. This is an example of a device that has 144 ports of 10 gig coming out of a device that has only 18 by uh, 100 gig ports. So that's a, a major improvement. The fourth use case is aggregation of either CPUs or FPGAs, or, or even SSD devices. So all SSD CPUs that support 10 gig uplinks are all of a sudden aggregated into a 100 gig link, which enables you to have a fat pipe coming of a farm of SSDs, CPUs, or, SLS, or uh, FPGAs that you implement. All these use cases are actually only a small part of the use cases that uh, you can do with pipe. We believe the pipe will actually be a, a device that can be used in other use cases. And each time that we talk with customers, they actually are very thrilled with the number of uh, use cases they can really employ with this device. In summary, the port extender modular approach is the solution to lower the capex and open skin the network. We are going to ease the network management by reducing one layer of the network. We are 
we're the first merchant silicon that is providing an optimized solution for port extender, which will enable you to implement this solution in a very cost-effective way. And we are dramatically reducing the top of the rack power in the, in the, in the network, which gives you a very a high benefit of power in all the data center. And the lastly, speed conversion. Marvell is the, the, the pipe solution is the solution to convert speeds from higher speeds to lower speeds and from lower speeds to higher speeds with a standard interface without any MLG requirements. We're now, we now have announced the pipe. We're now we're in development of pipe two that will enable you conversion from 25 gig to 50 gig. And that, that device will come very soon. Will enable all the new switches that come with a 50 gig I/O to move to 25 gig and 10 gig I/O. I invite everybody to join us in our next presentation, where we're going to elaborate more of our portfolio. That's at four o'clock in the executive track, and also visit our booth uh, in the back to see a live demo of Pipe and our boards uh, showing. Uh, a pipe working solution in our booth. Thank you very much.